Engineered nanomaterials are without a doubt an incredibly powerful technology. They can transform our lives and our livelihoods. But as we've seen, they're not always risk-free. The challenge we face is how to take advantage of this technology to improve lives, protect the environment, and support economic growth without causing unnecessary harm. This is the challenge that the NRP64 program set out to address. Through the 23 projects that it supported, considerable strides have been made in how to use nanomaterials to benefit lives and create economic opportunities while avoiding potential risks. I was privileged to be a part of an international team that reviewed and guided projects through the program. And in turn, we were guided by Peter Gare, one of the world's leading nanotechnology safety experts. So over the last few years, we've seen some quite wonderful science in this NRP64 program. But of course, the program has also been about benefiting society. So from your perspective, why is it so important for Switzerland to be investing in beneficial and responsible nanomaterial development? Well, Switzerland may be able to profit of all that new knowledge gained with these 23 research projects of NRP64 and this will certainly help the industry in Switzerland to develop new materials, to de develop new technologies. What were some of the highlights? Well, there are many highlights. Let me just give you two examples. Mm. Um, one is, that's my favorite, the development of artificial cartilage. Yes. And I'm really looking forward to what's going on there. I guess as we get older, we really want this cartilage. <laughs> that may, that may uh, be the reason, yeah, that yes. has to do with age. And the other one uh, I could mention here from a totally different area is water sewage, where nanoparticles are very efficiently cleared from actually to more than 95%. And then just thinking about moving into the future, where are some of the, the still unanswered questions that we need to address to ensure the benefits of these technologies? A very important question which is hardly worked upon is the time after exposure of, I'm talking about cells. Yes. And every cell encountering nanoparticles will react. And if that reaction is declining again, we could call it just a, a, a defense mechanism. Right. However, it might persist and then we should be careful and watch that uh, and decide whether this is really a problem. Over the past few years, these projects have just scratched the surface of what's possible using engineered nanomaterials. But they've shown us what we can achieve if we use science and evidence to understand both the opportunities of these technologies and the risks that they present. And perhaps most importantly, they've moved us closer to being able to develop and use engineered nanomaterials in ways that create jobs, improve our lives and help cure disease all without causing more problems than they solve.